where the fuck should I really even start? I got holes that I'm keeping in the dark. I got my niggas cross the street living large. Thinking we are going to get into all the tea and all the things that I love to use when I edit my videos. If you want to see part one, which is how I plan out all my content, including YouTube, Instagram, TikTok, then you can find that video here, wherever it's at, and linked in the description box. I use a Canon EOS M50, which I'm filming on right now. I also use my iPhone. I use the iPhone 12 Pro Max. iPhone video quality, great. Mainly use it for my vlogs. I use an EFM 11 to 22 millimeter. Yeah, that's what it says. That is the wide angle lens that fits on the Canon M50. Even though it's smaller, you can attach all different types of lenses on this camera. You just need an adapter. I believe it comes with a kit lens that's like 15 millimeters to 45, I think. Next with tripods, I use this tripod for my camera. It's like a more bulkier tripod. I got it from Amazon. Everything is linked down below. I also use another tripod, which is right here. This is the tripod I use for my phone and when I'm filming TikToks. So lightweight. I love that it's smaller and I can just throw this in my bag real quick, especially when I'm out taking Instagram pictures. Like I do not want to be out here carrying you no know, bulky little tripod and this is perfect. It comes with a ring light also. Now when I am vlogging, I am using this little tripod here it's a handheld tripod i love this thing i got the least expensive version but they have other types really easy to hold in your hand and then i also use a car tripod which is in my car it'll be linked down below this is like the best one that i've found for a car tripod so with mics now i use a rode micro microphone the rode microphones i feel like are amazing the quality is pretty good for me i love the quality and the micro microphone is small and it's like not too expensive so i definitely recommend getting a good microphone invest in your audio think about it when you're watching a youtube video you're probably not even looking at me right now are you looking at me i know sometimes when i'm watching a video i'm not looking at the screen the whole time but i'm listening so you want to make sure that your audio is good if you're just starting out then a lot of people just use their iphone and use like the voice memo app and they record their audio like that make sure that you have extra batteries you do not just want one or two batteries i have this whole case for my hard drive i put my sd cards in here and i also have an sd card holder which you definitely definitely gonna want because you don't want your sd cards all over the place getting lost stressful we don't have time for stress this is the hard drive that i use is it gonna focus i gotta do the youtube hand this hard drive has been the best one that i've had i went through seagate i went through a whole nother brand those crashed on me but this one this one's been pulling through and it has this little orange sleeve that helps if you drop it Another tip with this, make sure you have a backup hard drive because like I just said, my other hard drives that I had corrupted on me and I lost my videos. I still use my MacBook Air and she's still pulling through. She be breathing heavy, but she still gets the job done. Yeah, if you can, I would get a pro. I think the pro will be a little bit better for editing. Last but not least is my iPad. This is the Mac, the iPad Air. I think it's perfect. You could get the pro, but for me, the Air was amazing. I use it for like animations and thumbnails. This little thing here too on the back of my laptop is it's a hard drive sleeve. So when I'm editing, it holds my hard drive in this little sleeve so that it's not falling. The wire is not moving, so I use Final Cut Pro to edit my videos. I use Procreate to make my thumbnails and animations. I use Canva to make my little graphics like this for my social media. I use Canva for my media kit, like Canva is amazing. All right, so let's move on to organization, which is very, very, very important. So first things first is your SD cards. I have separate SD cards for different videos. So I have an SD card for vlogs. I have an SD card for sit down videos. Same thing on my hard drive. My hard drive is like a binder where I have different folders for music, sound effects, graphics that I use. So let's talk about the time because as you guys can see from my channel, it's sometimes hard to post consistently. So right now, I would say it typically takes me 8 to 16 hours to film a video. This is dependent on so many things. If I'm distracted, if I'm editing in the morning or at night. Normally, I have like an hour of footage that I have to cut down to like 10 minutes. If it's a vlog, I might have 2 to 3 hours of footage that I need to cut down to like 15 or 20 minutes. So it really just depends, but that's how long it takes me. Editing takes a long 
time. I'm hoping this video might help you edit faster. Throughout this video, I'm going to be sharing like different shortcuts and time saving tips. So we have a new video, right? We filmed all the clips. Next, we need to import them. So what you're going to do is create a new library. A library is what houses everything. A library will create an event. Within the library, you have all your different projects. When I was first starting out, it was a little confusing. When you import the clips, I think you should automatically just make proxy and optimize clips it takes up more space you might need to go in and delete some old like proxy footage and everything from older videos when you edit in the original files that you import it just drags out the process it takes a little bit longer you the video starts lagging it's just way easier to edit in like optimized media also there's like a little toggle thing and it'll say like do you want to show the clips in better performance or better quality always do better performance when you're editing within the library you have the events what I like to do is make little keyword collections in the event where I will label them based off of what's in them. So like music, b-roll, overlays. If I quickly want to add in an overlay that I found, I don't have to scroll through all of the clips that I imported. I can quickly find what I need and put it in the video. So next, after all your clips are imported in Final Cut, then you're going to add them to the storyline. Storyline or timeline. Easiest way to do this is you can multi-select all the clips that you imported and just press shift, click, scroll down to the last clip, click on it and it'll select all of the clips then you're gonna press e e is a shortcut to add all your clips to the end of the timeline so it'll add it all in order and that's an easy way so you don't have to drag and drop each clip onto your timeline if you want to add clips in between other clips you would press w if you want to add clips above other clips like overlays or audio underneath clips then you would hit q now let's get into the actual editing this is the part where i told you i do in three phases the rough cut the creative edits and the final edit so with the rough cut what i do is take out parts of the clips where i am saying ums a lot i be saying like a lot too i'm trying not to do that you don't want to overdo it where your video is choppy just let the video flow and try to take out as much as you can not my favorite part of editing but it's necessary so normally during the rough cut i try to get my video down to the time that i want it to be at so normally when i'm doing the rough edit i don't really add creative edits during this time so i like to create bookmarks what i like about final cut you can add little to-do marks on your video i use the shortcut m to do this and then i'll type in like add cricket sound effect here and then when i'm doing my creative edits i know where to put it but sometimes if i'm like trying to get through a video fast i'll add in the stuff then and there how i cut down the video you can use the shortcut b which brings up blade blade chops up the clip or you can also hit command b which also does the same thing so what i like to do to get it done a little bit faster if there's a space i'll cut that space out i'll highlight it and press b is it basically grays out that clip and it basically makes it not visible anymore in the video so what i do is i like gray out everything when i'm doing my rough edit and then when i'm done i will just multi-select all the grayed out parts and delete them so i feel like that makes me a little bit more efficient when i'm doing my rough edit um but there's so many ways to do it another way you can do it is by using you press the, the letter r and it brings up this selection tool just select the part with the space in it and then just hit the delete button and it deletes it so you just find the way that works for you in the way that's the fastest moving on to the creative edit this is where i add music sound effects text zoom in zoom out things like that if there's like a part of me talking too much i like to add in some b-roll there's like a really long part of you with b-roll try to split that up because nobody wants to see you fold laundry for like 30 seconds you know what i'm saying unless the song is good but like try not to have super long clips of certain things you gotta mix it up the last part of editing is the final cut basically i just go through the video and make sure there's no mistakes watch it over if i have extra time on my hands i'll like try to add more b-roll in add more effects i'm a perfectionist also that's another reason why it takes me a long time to get videos out you cannot be a perfectionist if you want to be consistent let me just say that and that's the hardest part
I get my music from Upbeat. It's $6.99 per month if you want to get the premium version. You can use the free version, but you have to make sure that you add the artist's names in the description box or you will get flagged. You can also use Thematic. Thematic is free. I used to use Epidemic Sound. I think I might go back to it. The reason why I stopped is because I wasn't using it as much and it's kind of expensive. You can use the YouTube library for music. And one of my favorite ways to find music right now is through SoundCloud. The thing with SoundCloud you can find some good music on there but you have to make sure you do your check if I'm unsure about a song I'll make a um, whole new project with just the music upload that to YouTube and see if there's any copyrighted problems one thing you don't want to do is like edit your whole video with all this music from SoundCloud and then you get to the end and you realize you can't use music in on YouTube so always do your checks beforehand I find sound effects on upbeat has sound effects but you have to pay for that also epidemic sound has sound effects also have to pay for that you can find sound effects on YouTube for free. Another great website to check out is Free Sounds. I normally just use the sound effects that Final Cut comes with now. Favorite sound effects that I like to use is the mouse click one. I like to use the swish bottle cork. I like to use the answering machine one. A voice effect that I like to use is the large room voice effect and it kind of makes you sound like there's an echo. So with fonts now, my favorite font that I like to use is Helvetica. That's like the basic starter kit font. I like to use the font called New York. I like the New England, I think it's called New England font. It's like scripts. And there's another one. I always forget the name, but I'm gonna type it up here so you guys can see. You can find free fonts on thefont.com. Font effects that I like to use. I really like the typewriter effect. I also like to use the bad TV effect on font. I'm still learning with this to be honest but I know some things with color correction basically it's like a filter for your video easiest way but you have to pay to find um, different filters they're called LUTs and you can just go on Google and just search Final Cut Pro LUTs and a whole bunch will come up most of them you have to pay for you can definitely do some searching and find free ones in fact there's a video explaining if you have Lightroom presets this shows you how to turn them into LUTs I have Lightroom presets that I made on Etsy if you want to check them out thank you to those who bought it I love you so if you don't want to add a lot and you want to do the work yourself you can just mess around with the color wheel the saturation the brightness and everything you know once you get a look that you like then what you can do is just save that as an effect and just apply it to your whole video so you don't have to keep messing around with the color wheel for each video that's what I did another thing instead of applying it to each in every clip of your video you could do that if you select all of them but an easier way is to just apply an adjustment layer I think I downloaded this online adjustment layers basically let you add anything onto that little layer and it'll apply it to everything underneath it I just apply my preset onto that adjustment layer and anything underneath it it will change the color with color correction if you want to do it the free way if you have a youtuber that you like and you really like the way that they color their videos you can download their video and put it into your timeline and you can match the color of their video to your clips so that's a free way of doing color correction my favorite effects that i use is the zoom effect constantly using those just to add more movement into my videos i do not i used to manually do this anymore what i did was i did it for one clip right i set my keyframes you can also do this by like ken's burn that's another way to add the zoom but i just like to use keyframes so i set my keyframes to zoom in i saved that effect and now all i have to do is just apply that effect onto each clip and it'll automatically zoom in and out that's a time saving tip because it took so long zooming in and out of clips before i saved the preset listen we we're here to save time another effect is the quick zoom i do this when i'm like trying to emphasize something or something funny happened another effect is a bad tv effect again like i said with the text you can also apply a list of videos and it just makes it look nice. Another effect that I love, love, love is the masking effect. I do this like when I'm cleaning. A lot of YouTubers do this. And what you would do is just like mask, do a draw mask of yourself. But this effect is so nice. I love doing this. I also love to do this masking effect with text. I love when I see it in videos. Another popular effect is the 8mm effect. I found this template on YouTube for free, guys. Just search up like green screen effects, 8 millimeter effects on YouTube, and they have so many templates that you can add. You can also purchase them too if you got money, right? You can purchase them on apps like Motion Array or like MFX, I think it's called M the X, one of those. But you can purchase anything you can think of honestly for a video. 
on these websites. A lot of you guys are asking me how I do like the phone overlay in my videos. I made a whole video on that. It's on TikTok if you want to check those out. It's also on YouTube Shorts too. Right now, I make my graphics on Canva, but I just make a green screen. And then once you import it into Final Cut, you're going to use the effect called Keyer, and it automatically removes the green background. Another thing that I like to do, like if I'm if I'm looking for a specific gift or sticker, I will go on Instagram and make a green screen video. Make a little story posts right change the background to green of course and then i'll search through whatever stickers i'm looking for or gif download it and import it into final cut so that's another way you can make little graphics too i make my word graphics on procreate i write out the word add a new layer and then you rewrite out the word but i just do it twice that's good enough and then i would export it as a animated vid movie or something like that make sure the background is transparent then i'll just add it to my video so my favorite transition that i like to use is the circle transition a top one transition that i use is the movement like slide transition another transition that i like is the dissolve one and there's another one that i found online where it's like a lens burn type of transition on to the shout out for this video thank you so much for commenting on my last video also and for watching for being here shout out goes to aesthetic glow up they have a lot of fashion content on their youtube channel so they have a youtube channel if you want to check them out you can thank you again if you want to shout out make sure you leave the star emoji underneath this video and the first person that i see will get the shout out i wish you guys all happy editing thank you guys all so much for watching i love you and i will see you in my next video bye